Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is TJ Osmakiti Sanders. Joining me is Froden. How you doing, man? Doing good. Uh, although you haven't actually trusted me about my new name as of five seconds ago. It's actually Froden Cutie. Is it Froden Cutie? It is Froden Cutie. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm glad you're hopping on board as well. Yeah. It was just a matter of time before that trend caught on. That's what I was hoping mm -hmm. for when I made mm -hmm. my name Osmakiti. I was debating between Froden HS, Froden LOL, Froden XD. But uh, I think I, I, I settled on QT. Seems like the best yeah. option out of that. Well, we're moments away from jumping into our first semifinal match of the day between Amaz and Two Wet. Now, Amaz, Amaz QT. Amaz QT and uh, Two Wet SC are the these two players. Uh, Amaz made it out uh, of his group yesterday in first place with a 2 0 score. Um, bo both the invited players, actually, Amaz and Raynad, were the yeah. two players that made it out of the group. So he had a really impressive performance. Amaz QT. Amaz QT. <laughs> Yeah. And it's too wecked. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have the two hunters uh, matching up. I believe uh, they're both mid-range hunters, right? Yes, they are. Both mid-range hunters. Um, both uh, very similar styles of druid. Um, two of course, does have the Ancient of Wars in his druid. Um, and then the third deck is uh, quite a bit different, actually. two with the Tempo, Tempo Mage with Water Elemental, Snow Chugger, and Harrison Jones. No blink charm, though. Yeah, that's right. He still has to uh, win with that weird concoction. I remember too. It was the guy also bringing the uh, that mage with Flame Waker, right? That was yeah. him. Uh, uh, literally, he had to submit that deck a day after Flame Waker was released. And uh, now that it's been a week out, he just said no. <laughs> yeah, no more Flame Wakers. I actually asked him yesterday since we only saw about 18 cards of the deck yesterday. I thought, you know, maybe the bottom 12 cards are like Flame Waker, Sword of the Apprentice, Knife Juggler, that right. kind of thing. All the cards that we come to expect in the yeah, Flame yeah. Waker deck. Sure. But he told me, I asked, hey, uh, do you put Flame Waker in your deck? He said no. <laughs> like, not even an explanation. Or oh, anything. just an N-O? Just an N-O, yeah. He's a man of few words, as you can tell. To it, of course, second time making it back to Legendary Series. We did see him last week, like you said. Uh, yeah, that's right. He came to the Open again. Yeah. Impressive, which means if he loses here, he's eliminated because this is a single elimination portion of the uh, of the, of the event. Yeah. If he loses here, he gets another chance in the uh, redemption tournament. Yeah. Um, and he actually gets two chances. Yeah. Right. Like right. the second. Yeah. The second yeah, chance. Yeah. Gotcha. He gets seated into two separate brackets. So in those seven player brackets, if he yeah. lost, he gets seated twice. Same with uh, and, lead paint. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, we are going to jump into the match. Mirror match, mid-range hunter versus mid-range hunter, mid hunter. Now, a couple of these mid-range hunter players uh, yesterday I saw put Harrison Jones. So if there's any card that improves the uh, win rate in the mirror matchup slightly, I think it is that card, but I can't remember which one of these players was the one to bring it. I feel like it's got to be more on two wet side than Amaz. The Harrison Jones is interesting, though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see if it was an Amaz. Amaz and Harrison have a very nice connection. Mm hmm help them win a lot of tournaments. The thing about um, Harrison in the mirrors, though, as much as it's great against cards like the Ewan, though, I feel like having the second Sludge Belcher or Lothab is just more versatile overall. Yeah. So in, even though it's situationally good against because a class that happens to have weapons and uses it, I still feel like I'd rather have Sludge Belcher and Lothab if that's what you're replacing Harrison with. Yeah, especially since uh, mid -range Hunter, I mean, the only weapon they have is Eagle Horn Bow. And sometimes you can right. stall a lot of momentum if you if they have a trap up and they're expecting to get extra value from the Eagle Horn Bow out of the trap. Um, but a lot of times the Eagle Horn Bow does its job early on. It's too bad that cards like Gladiator Longbow just never caught on. Just way too much mana. I still think there's way a spot for it somewhere. It's, it's pretty awesome if you think about it. Yeah. Seven mana, ten damage, and you get immunity. Mm -hmm. It's rated highly in Arena. Yeah, Crip actually says it's one of the sickest weapons in arena yeah because you get to kill off a lot of mid-range creatures really easily yeah you know kill a shield maiden cleanly mm -hmm. uh in the meantime two wet uh sees that his opponent started off with the weapon does get to science the the mad scientist but there is another secret in amaz's hand so he can hold on to it for extra charges in the meantime we've got the old starving buzzard and unleash the hounds <laughs> combo <laughs> what the, about that the old starving buzzard Knife Juggler, Unleash, Turn 10 combination. Oh, man. That's, That's so bad for Two Wet, though. Look look at him. He just he actually had to pass. And Amaz drew into Pilot Shredder. This is awful for Two Wet. 
Yeah, and I mean, a lot of times it comes down to this type of situation with mid-range hunter. They do have a, they top out at a lot of uh, high-end creatures. Savannah High Main, Lothep, yeah. Sludge Belcher, Doctor Boom. Do you use uh, the Lothep here, or would you save the coin for the High Main? Is it too late for that? I mean, what if you save it for the High Main, and then he puts out the Freezing Trap? I think it's too it's too hard to guarantee, right? Yeah, once you lose the momentum for two turns over the course of two turns against uh, in the mirror matchup, it's really hard for you to come back into it. Yeah. It's like the first player to play high main has such a significant advantage just because they have beast advantage also, so they can just, like, kill command uh, their opponent's high main. Their beast advantage. Huh? <laughs> the beast advantage, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it really feels like that because you don't have mana to play a big threat and to remove both turns uh, in the same turn, so... Well, this is rough. Um, too wet. Can start climbing back. He's got some comeback mechanics. Not the starving buzzard unleash the hounds, but the knife juggler unleash the hounds. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if the series, or sorry, this game got long enough where starving buzzard would make a combination with unleash the hounds. Yeah. Oh, but starving buzzard is still good with Savannah High Main. That allows you to draw two cards on a trade. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, I mean, it's such a weak body. A three-two for five mana. No. I don't know if that's what Amaz wanted to see either. That's pretty unlucky, considering that um, considering that he already has a copy of Freezing Trap in his hand. You know what? The worst part of it all, TJ. What? Is that it's not symmetrical. Nope. Did that bother you too? Not as much as it seems to bother you. Mm. But it it definitely it certainly rustles my jimmies. Mm -hmm. All right, he's going to push for damage and recognize that he has two kill commands to potentially end the game. Just pick a web spinner. Definitely seems reasonable. Yeah. Look at that new UI on our production overlay. Secret in green to represent I know. Hunter. I was... I shed a tear of joy earlier today when I saw it. The production value is real. And, I mean, this is about the only turn you're ever going to get mm. to play the Savannah High Main, so... Yeah, but this is what actually works out okay for Amaz uh, on paper, because he drops the Freezing Trap number two, pushes for more damage, and Lothib! Whoa! Came out so quickly, didn't even have time to make it to the board. So, he has unleashed to Hounds before this uh, Lothib came. Yeah. And he could use it to activate it and start pushing for damage, because he had two kill commands as well. Yeah. But that Lothib... That yeah. Lothab. And he also has double kill command in his oh, hand. Oh, man. I mean, no beast to activate it, but he's just put on so much pressure at this point. There's no way that you can avoid taking at least five damage the course of the next turn. <sighs> so easy to piece together. I mean, if he takes five damage next turn, he doesn't even need any piece. He can just double kill command for three in hero power. He's got to get something Dude, pretty sir. negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a beast to activate the kill commands. That's guaranteed lethal. Yep. Uh, if it, even if he killed Lotha, because he would have two kill commands with the hero power. Yeah. Oh man, that is really difficult uh, for Two Wet to handle in this in this situation. But Amaz has drawn almost perfectly for the situation in terms of uh, being able to, to you know use what he's been dealt with. Ideally, he would have liked to have a minion over that freezing trap. But uh, he'll take it in this scenario. Yeah, the Lothep came right on time in, yeah. in that situation. Um, and the Beast just didn't matter at all, even though you could say that he got, he got unlucky in that situation. But Amaz is going to take game number one mm -hmm. with the mid-range Hunter. And the Freezing Trap worked out quite well in the end. Yeah, the double for freezing sure. Trap. Um, the Freezing Traps ended up being pretty good for the situation, considering that it couldn't get shut down easily uh, by that Unleash the Hounds. Yeah. And it was funny enough because it was coming up on the turns where, you know, maybe he would have been able to use the Unleash the Hounds and start kill commanding to control the board. Like, mm -hmm. he would have Unleash the Hounds, kill command, pop the Freezing Trap, and hit with the high main. Like, that's just, like, that's really good. You start fighting play. back. And then your opponent just developed mana to do nothing effectively. Yeah. Um, and he had a second kill command to potentially also push for the win the following turn. Yeah. Hunters usually can move, maneuver around the freezing trap quite well. Um, I always sort of compare it to Druid as well. Once they get to the later portions of the game, they can use Force of Nature. Right. Uh, and use one of the treants to proc the freezing trap. It's sort of in a, in a similar vein there. Unleash the trees. Unleash the trees. Yeah, all right. Well, it looks like Amaz is going to opt to go with the Druid this time around. That's what he's going to do. He's going to unleash the trees. <laughs> Versus the hounds. Versus the hounds. What would you take uh, in a fight? 
trees or some really savage rabid dogs? Trees. 100%. Haven't but, you ever seen Lord of the Rings? They die at the end of the turn. Haven't you ever seen Lord of the Rings? Yeah, with, uh, what was his name? Treebeard? Treebeard. And all of his tree buddies. Treants. That's yeah. exactly what they are, actually. So they're the same type of thing. I know. They're smaller treants. Now, which would you rather name your your uh, your high school mascot? Would it rather be trees or would you rather be the hounds? <laughs> trees. One hundred percent. Totally dank, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you uh, went to my high school. Oh man. What time are we meeting? <laughs> 420. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Lamaz is going to go up against mid-range hunter with Druid, and that's going to be a lot of difficulty. He's going to need a lot of tree support. He is. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty rough matchup. Um, it, it's even, I would say it's even tougher than uh, face hunter, just because a lot of times you can afford to, it's a weird dynamic. A lot of times against face hunter, you, if you have a couple of early drops, you can make them go a lot further. Um, if you can stabilize earlier on, a lot of times the face hunter will run out of juice. You're talking about as the druid player. As the druid player, yeah. If you're in the druid player's perspective here, uh, the face hunter will start running out of like uh, threats. They'll run out of cards every turn. They'll be playing something that does like three or four damage um, at max. Whereas the the mid range hunter, even once you stabilize the early game, they start to put out threats like Lothab, like Savannah High Mains, and then they can burst you down from a higher amount because of those big cards. So you don't have and as big of a window to stabilize. And so I feel like sometimes it can feel even harder to beat a mid-range hunter as a druid than it would be to, to beat a face hunter. So, Well, so far, so good for Amaz. He has the Keeper of the Grove to deny whatever his opponent's been able to drop. And seems like t -Wits had a relatively slow start outside of that, mm -hmm. out of that, uh, that knife juggler. He doesn't have Animal Companion, no Web Spinner, no Mad Scientist. Just an eagle horn bow, and that might contemplate him to hero power pass and wait for his opponent to do something. Yeah. Eagle horn bow, do you even attack? Do you just sit on it? I would sit on it. Uh, well, the be eagle careful, horn. it's sharp. <laughs> 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 nice. That was a nymph joke, man. Yes, it <laughs> Indeed, it was. <laughs> yeah. So dumb. The eagle horn bow has. It's pointy, man. It, it is. I mean, look at that thing. It's got a skull on it too. Wait, eagle? You know what that you know what the skull of that is? A tree. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an eagle's <laughs> horn. Oh, that would make a lot more sense. <laughs> Eagles don't have horns, Froden. This is Warcraft we're you, talking about. You just man. got baited. <laughs> hmm. But seriously though, this is Blizzard. <laughs> Leark is a lion and a monkey. No, he's not. He's just I mean, a monkey. It's, it's, a hawk, it's a hawk, too. I'm pretty sure he's just a monkey. We had this conversation yesterday. Mm. Thought we went over this. Well, I think uh, Coin Sludge Belcher seems to be the mm -hmm. answer to this. Fantastic against but, uh, Power uh, Shredder. You know, but at the same time, it doesn't give you something to do the following turn. It just, it just feels like too good against that plus the Eagle Horn Bow, though. Yeah. And you want to keep the keeper um, just for the Savannah high made possibilities. This animal companion could also be really big, but Sludge Belcher might even be the better answer here. Yeah. Uh, I like the curve here with uh, using Sludge Belcher because then you use Savannah high main on uh, turn six, and then you have uh, Animal Companion Houndmaster to use in tandem oh. On turn seven. But then you still have Houndmaster on Savannah High Main, and you can use Quick Shot this turn to eliminate the Sludge Belcher with the weapon hit. So you can play oh, Animal Companion. Yeah, if yeah. it's a Leoc, you can buff it so that way. I don't know, actually, if you play Animal Companion, either way, you want to maintain the the Pilot Shredder. Yeah. I think the Sludge Belcher might be slightly better. Actually, it's, it's, a, it's better by a considerable margin. Just put more stats onto the board. Mm hmm. I approve. Yeah. Well, a one drop is actually uh, quite convenient here because mm -hmm. last he wouldn't have had any solid plays this turn to fill up his whole mana curve um, unless that play was like Savage or Hero Power, but that doesn't really make too much sense here. Um, Keeper of the Grove is okay because these are good silence targets, but there's also, he knows a Savannah High main right. that's inevitable that that silence is so crucial on. That's why it's unfortunate that he's had both Force of Nature's in his opening hand. Mm -hmm. 
not the most useful. I, I think there is merit to using a Savage Roar here and taking out that first copy of Sludge Belcher. Let's see what this thing pops out. He's going for more mana efficient usage and trying to hope that his opponent uh, will have to dig a little uncomfortably to try and eliminate it. But this ha high main is going to do so much work. Yeah. Because the thing is, it's not just a 6-5 with death rattle effect that summons 2-2 two, two hyenas that have beasts to activate kill command hound master. <laughs> it's the fact that it's hidden behind a taunt. So it's a, it, even at its worst, it's just like a fire elemental. Yeah. That just starts hitting like a truck. Yeah, and his hand is just full of high impact cards. Like, this is such a great hand to have at, in the mid game. Because his hand isn't filled with cards like Haunted Creeper or um, like a second Eagle Horn bow. Like, all these cards yeah. are impactful as soon as they hit the board. It, except for maybe if you get like Misha. But even then, a 4 4 with Taunt for three mana is just huge. So, this is like, this is where. The mid range hunter just lives right here in the mid game. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. Fish and clear, playing the high main, just making sure to go through all the combat math. I like that he's taking his time and hesitating. <laughs> You're talking about trees. There's nothing quite like the might of a high main, though. Indeed. I mean, you can have all the trees you want, but I mean, those force those trees are just gonna be hitting the sludge belchers. Yeah. Lions can scratch the hell out of trees, man. Haven't you ever seen Lion King? Lion King 2? TJ, I was born in the 90s. What do you think? No, Lion King 2, I think, came out in the early 2000s. Question is, did you watch Lion King 1 and a half? <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a movie of Lion King 1 and a half. It's very high on my just... list of movies that should never have been made. <laughs> oh, man. Along with The Hangover 2. And every Hangover movie afterwards. <laughs> This is a lot of damage. 6, 10, 13, uh, and he's got 8 in the hand. That's 21. I mean, surely he can start piecing together a charge, right? Just start, like, attacking the face. Mm -hmm. Let's go for it. Face, 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 face. Yeah. He's almost, uh, not guaranteed, but nearly guaranteed to have him be slept over on the floor with that Savannah High Man hiding behind two yeah. taunts now. Um, he's going to have to force of nature just to clear off some. Yeah, but he's dead next turn. Yeah. <laughs> He's dead by even a lot. It's not even right. Piece, ha, forcing a, a hunter to only have to piece together yeah. two points of damage in order to kill you. Not that tough. And Tuet's going to return the favor to Amaz and tie the series up one to one. Midrange Hunter has had a uh, pretty superb win rate over the past couple of days. Yeah, and a lot of people are always complaining about the face hunter being uh, just way too potent for, uh, you know, relative to the fact that its its games are very fast, it's a yeah. low curve, it's not a lot of counterplay, but maybe Rage Hunter is still always there, just as like a threat to potentially pounce on game, you know, mm -hmm. the meta, which people play a little bit too slow and the tempo is not appropriate. Yeah. Um, and it can just really seize control of the board and just leverage it for damage. Like, high mean is just really incredible. And uh, it's going to be a long time for mid-range hunter to completely disappear. It, it makes you wonder, like, how strong the deck actually was when Undertaker was a part of it, because oh, all the sure. synergy was still there. With I uh, mean, I don't, I don't have to wonder. Sludge I was there too, Jay. <laughs> I was there too. Well, it makes you wonder how strong the deck would still be if Undertaker was in the same state. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where you could write it into the Hearthstone history books. You know, it's like when I was your age, Undertaker used to get buffed by plus one, plus one. I mean, that's yeah. what happens in Hearthstone in 10, 15 years when a lot of kids start mm. playing it. Only Nax kids would get it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> only only Nax kids would get this joke. Yeah. And uh, it, it's one of those things where people will be like, oh my gosh, really? But they can't really understand it. Kind of like, you know, life before the internet. It's like, how did you ever survive? <laughs> it's true. And there was things that you take for granted as well. like, well, well, we went outside and, and like, asked people what happened. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> God, I just look at my phone for like five minutes and not talk to anybody, and I find out everything I need. Can't wait till Hearthstone gets to the point of that one day. Uh, but Druid versus Warlock going to be the next matchup here. I, I th I'm pretty sure, yeah, Maz was the He did play Handlock. We only saw one Zoo player yesterday. Maz, the all golden Handlock, if I remember correctly. Uh, he, didn't he have also all golden uh, everything we just saw? Double fo golden Force Nature, double. Was uh, it all golden, his Druid? Yeah. Did he have the golden coin as well? Yeah. Okay. 
So he's got the uh, hand lock here that he has to shut down the druid. And, you know, that's honestly an okay scenario. We've seen this matchup several times. So much to the fact where guys like Raynad even keep Molten Giant in his opening hand. Yeah. Moss tosses it back immediately, mm -hmm. saying, I want things to do. I don't want to have cards where I'm just hoping I can play. I'd rather have my Ancient Watcher Silence plays, or I'd rather have my Twilight Drakes with Mountain Giants. You know who else had an all golden warlock? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Magic Amy. Yeah, I, I realized five seconds before you said it. Illuminati confirmed. Too wet here. Now, this is, uh, we talked about it quite a bit yesterday, but this is a matchup that Handlocks hate. Um, if not because the win rate is not the best if you're the Handlock player, at least nowadays with double combo being rampant, but it's just such a stressful matchup to play. Because a lot of times you feel helpless because you get to the point where the if, if the Druid can get a board, they're constantly threading combo every turn. You're having to use your taunt cards like uh, Defender of Argus, Sunfree Protector, inefficiently. Uh, and we saw that exactly happen in the last matchup with uh, Domdas versus Luigi's. How do you boost your win percentage? What are some of the small nuances where you can increase your win rate in this matchup, TJ? Hmm. I don't think it's much on the... Um, maybe running a second Shadow Flame, but even then, because a lot of times you can Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame in order to stabilize instead of having to Ancient Watcher Taunt. Uh, we actually saw Raynad run Double Shadow Flame in his in his handlock yesterday. And he was oh, one of he the, loved Shadow Flame. It's one of yeah. his favorite cards in the game. And he was one of the players that had the best win rate yesterday against Druid. Um, and that's the only difference that I've seen so far. Uh, the Zombie Chow I don't think really help, helps that much. Uh, there's some handlocks that tech Zombie Chow in as sort of an anti-aggro. But you can't really classify the Druid as like an aggro class, and I don't know if Zombie Chow helps that much. I think it's more on what can the Druid player have in their deck that makes their matchup less against the Handlock is the, is the thing that makes more of a difference. What do you think? Uh, I think uh, Druid players hate you. <laughs> so just call 1-800 Azumo Cutie. <laughs> I love Druid. Druid players hate him. <laughs> Find out these three easy ways for Handlock to beat Druid now. <laughs> Click here, ESL.GG. Slash Legendary Series. Um, no, I think a lot of what you said is there's merit to it. And for sure, it's one of the trickier matchups to, to navigate through. I think there's a lot of ways for Handlock to just overstep their bounds mm -hmm. and uh, extend too far to the board where they just completely they tap a little bit too much where they're just not playing around the right thing and it's really hard because the onus is definitely on the handlock player that's partially why i feel like people love playing druid because it's just so linear with what it wants to accomplish it's like mm -hmm. i just want to use trees and hit you in the face yeah <laughs> with the with the roar of a lion i thought that was a bear that's what force and nature savage is it's just trees being yelled at. oh it bear. is a bear yeah i mean that that's it's a half bear half hawk Okay. Everything's just half something. Oh, man. Pretty sure it's just a bear. It's, uh, it's a bear with a very good dentistry plan. <laughs> it's um, this second Twilight Drake is very annoying to deal with. And it's interesting that Amaz didn't choose to go for a tap uh, giant just because he really wants to respect the, um, the big game hunter. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, he said, no keep for the crow. So, <laughs> oh, like, exactly like that. Exactly like that. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's maybe a couple of oohs and ahs in between. <laughs> you you can't get or lose board control in this matchup. You can't give the control over to the druid, and plays like that where you tap giant, it's more susceptible and to giving the control back over to the druid than playing a twilight twilight trick would, because you can play BGH and then still have mana for something else. Where if you even if he did have Keeper, even if he top-decked Keeper and he Keepered you and then Hero Powered, it'd still be weaker of a board. And you want to make sure that every turn, especially this at this stage in the game, these crucial stages for the Handlock... <laughs> for the Handlock play... <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where else. <laughs> Moving on to the next part of the... So what, what do you think you should be doing here then, uh... Is Emperor Thorson just too risky? Because it, it is great to reduce everything by mana cost, but Sylvanas on the board unchecked. 
leads to some really bad scenarios just because your opponent can tr pick up an easy trade and then optimally steal your own th Thorson. That kind of stuff I'm always afraid of. Yeah. I think playing, um, <clears throat> I was going to say Azure Drake to cycle because then you're, it, if, it doesn't feel like you're doing nothing this turn. Uh, you're still putting more stuff onto the board and uh, cycling through your deck a little bit more. Uh, because like you said, yeah, and Thor Sand's super risky because it, it, there's a possibility that it could just get stolen. Um, and uh, Pile of Shit I don't like as much either because you're putting sort of the same immediate amount of power on the board with the Azure Drake, but you're still cycling through, which is, I think, less risky with the Sylvanas on the board. There's a, definitely a multitude of plays here. Um, I do like the one which allows you to tap, but I also really like the Dark Boom. The boom is pretty sweet. I also really do like the um, the idea of playing a giant too this turn because you can tap giant and play a taunt on the giant. Yeah, I like Watch Your Shadow Flame. Watch Your Shadow Flame, also pretty good too. Yeah, just so that way you can control the state of the board. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of viable plays there. I think he still wants to deny Druid any ability to get tempo swing through Big Game Hunter. Yeah, so I think he picked the least obtrusive to his board state. Yeah, I think the immediate control of the board is the most important thing. Um, not leaving it up to the Druid player to sort of dictate the pace or dictate the state of the board. Like making sure that you are as proactive as possible. And so plays like Watch mm. or Shadow Flame as opposed to maybe just throwing down a Dr. Boom and hoping your Boom Bots are, are successful in their endeavors. Boom Bots are... Uh, they're pretty important, uh, definitely, in... Yeah. The early game stages of how the board develops. They're ambitious creatures. <laughs> right, they all have big dreams. Mm -hmm. They all want to be a four. And laugh at the ones. I don't know if they... I, I mean, the funny thing is they think they control their fate. <laughs> but they don't. Tell me, tell me, more, <laughs> tell me more about the psychology. It's really, it's really the dark. It's really of dark. The bots, Dan. <laughs> I can't, man. It's a uh, client, client uh, relationship privilege NDA. Okay. I can't, you know. I didn't know the boom bots. Uh, doc, doctor, partner. client relationships. I was saying. Okay. Yeah. It was. I'm running out of my clever juices, man. You're, <laughs> you're stress testing me here. I'm failing. Doc, Dr. Boom can get answered by the big game hunter here. That was a draw that would allow him to start swinging back onto the board. And that yeah. was what Amaz was afraid of. But he's held that Mountain Giant for a long time. So if Tuet trades into Sylvanas, plays Dr. Boom, or plays uh, Big Game Hunter on Dr. Boom with the Pilot Shredder, uh, then that's an opportunity for Amaz to maybe drop this Mountain Giant and have the Boom Bots aspire to be that four. Mm -hmm. But not everyone could be a four, TJ. Mm -hmm. Some players or boom bots are just forever threes. There's nothing they can do about it. Um, I've seen Tuwet in the past, in this matchup, the Handlock versus Druid matchup, be very conservative with his BGH. Um, he, like yesterday, he, there was a play where BGH seemed pretty obvious on a Doctor Boom, but he held on to it and used like his. He took like 12 damage to the face in a single turn with the hero power and letting the boom bots hit his face and a, like a Savage Roar in order to clear Dr. Boom off the board instead of using BGH, mm -hmm. just so he could save it for Inevitable Giants and the inevitable tempo swing for, uh, of that, so. Oh my, Maz is getting very aggressive. Ooh. Ooh. He's gonna use uh, both of these and then most likely Dark Bomb this yeah. down. Oh, well, I mean, Two Wet's at 14 health and right. he's staring at a Giant on the board and he just uses BGH. Hmm, all of a sudden now this Mountain Giant can't be dealt with. He has no way to draw cards. He's at nine mana, the worst turn to be on with two wild growths in the hand. He is sitting with two blanks. Mm -hmm. He could swipe. No, he can't. Can't do that. Doesn't have enough mana. Emperor Thorson. It's the only play. Hero power down to two one. Mm -hmm. uh, hope hope your opponent just does not have the ability to kill you. Yeah. Although, realistically, I don't think he should. He's got 11 damage. Unless he picks up a second Hellfire, right? Mm -hmm. Second Hellfire or second Dark Bomb? Yeah. Defender Vargas would be just one short. Yeah. Uh, next turn, I mean, Tuet can double cycle with Wild Gross since they now cost one mana. Um, 
Savator now costs two, so he could fit in a uh, Force of Nature Savator Hero Power combo for 15 damage instead of uh, 14. So there are some benefits to uh, being able to get Emperor Thorstein down on this turn without dying. But he's in a lot of trouble. Because usually this is the spot where the Druid wants to be in, where it's turn 10 and they want to try and top deck for lethal. All right, Amaz is just going to push for as much damage as possible. Uh, I was thinking even the antique heal bots, but eh, that's reasonable. He's even thinking about dropping the Sunfury Protector just to get another minion on the board to hit the face. And it's going to be very problematic to clear this board. He's got Swipe. He's got Keeper of the Grove. He's going to need a little bit more juice. And actually, playing that Sunfury Protector might make the difference. Yeah. Because Amaz chose to go for it. Mm -hmm. Second Swipe, though. Does that change it? Uh, yeah, he should be able to clear the board. Yeah, because he can double swipe plus keeper here. Um, does he have? To, can he now? The question is, he can do it, but can he do it without giving up his Thorazin? So he can attack in a three, f three, four swipe. That twice? Uh, no, he can't. It just like, it kind of gets awkward if you don't swipe. Uh, no, the and Thorazin to be honest, a cleaner way to clear it might be using the. The Savage Roar? The Savage Roar. Now, um, it sort of doesn't feel great to give up the one of the Savage Roar leverage. Because a lot of times later mm -hmm. in the game, the Warlock has to play around the possibility of double combo. Right. If they haven't seen Innervate, either Innervate, either, Sa either Savage Roar or either For Force of Nature. Sure. Um, but looks like he is just going to use the the double swipe. It's still pretty effective. Oh, wait. Um, hold on. He's just a little bit short. I forgot he can't uh, can't take care of every minion. Mm -mm. I think ah, I forgot that he couldn't hero. Even if he hero powered, though, he actually would die to the, the Hellfire. And he dies to second Hellfire. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, that, you know, that was a really good, again, spot by Amaz to realize that if his opponent had an opportunity to clear with double swipe, he needed to still play one more minion. Mm -hmm. And uh, a really good push for lethal there. And that's not an opportunity that we've seen many handlock players get to leverage over their opponents on Druid. No, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's usually the other way other way around where uh, it's the Warlock that's sort of having to use all their cards in, in desperation to try and stay alive. But sure. uh, Amaz just one win away from securing a spot in the final city. He's up 2-1 over 2 at The only deck he still has to win with now is uh, his own Druid. That's right. Uh, and uh, the Druid that he lost with earlier, it's got double mm -hmm. combo. Got uh, the full works of how it can just run, and Maz, he just has to get the, the early tempo advantage over his opponent's Druid. Yeah. Now, wh and what's interesting about uh, Week 4 Legendary Series is 7 out of the 8 players brought Druid. Okay. And then um, I feel like Tuet has really good ways to target his opponent's Druid decks, right? Mm -hmm. He's got the Patron War, which is great against Druid. He's got yeah. uh, Mid-Range Hunter, uh, which two is... Tuet doesn't have... He's got the Tempo Mage. Oh, oh, sorry. He doesn't have the Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. That was a different person that I was talking about. Modern Leopard. Is yeah, Modern mean? Leopard, yeah. Okay, so he's got Tempo Mage, which is still good against Druid. It's still good, yep. And uh, he's, he's, got the, he's got his own Druid. How would you evaluate his Druid is in the mirror? So now, Tuet's Druid actually has the Ancient of War. Um, right. Whereas uh, Amaz's Druid is just straight up uh, the standard double combo fast Druid. Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think that... The Ancient of War actually helps that matchup slightly, uh, because the the one thing that people used to say, well, it doesn't really matter too much, but that was back in the day when Druids pretty much standardly ran Black Knight. Sure. Uh, but now nobody's run the Black Knight in a long time. Well, the only person we saw run the Black Knight in a long time was Cross, and we theorycrafted that maybe he doesn't have other legendaries, but he went out very quickly in this tournament. And he never even got to use the Black Knight to great effectiveness even once. Yeah, so it wasn't the swing that we've come to expect. Yeah, it's unless you uh, have the foresight to be able to uh, know that the the Ancient of War is coming. We've actually only seen it twice. I would hope Amaz would do his research. Then he would save a Keeper for that. Uh, but it's still, if you put an Ancient of War down on the board against a Druid, a lot of times they have to trade multiple creatures into that. And uh, it gives the um, Two-Wed or whatever Druid is playing the Ancient of War quite a big momentum swing in their favor being able to do that all right well two wet gonna queue up the mage trying to see if he can catch the uh, uh the druid off guard with the swings with 
Mirror Entity and other cards that give Druid fits. And there it is, one of the Mirror Entities. Even if you have Mad Scientist in the deck, would you keep Mirror Entity in your hand? Uh, I think so. Uh, because against Druid, what can they throw in? Zombie Chow. I don't think Amaz runs Zombie Chow. Right, that was two at the head of Zambi Chow. Yeah, because it wasn't golden. <laughs> um, but I... You are so jelly, dude. I am. <laughs> I have a almost full golden patron wear. I'm I'm missing the golden legendaries, <laughs> the ones that actually matter. Simmer down, TJ. I know. I'm you can you can use your paycheck for casting to to get like a couple of cool decks. They pay me in packs, so it works out. <laughs> you wish they paid you in packs. <laughs> yeah, it would it would just be going cutting out the middleman, just go directly to the source, because that all that money Some goes to packs cards anyway. Are pretty dang sweet though. Yeah. Mana Worm, double flame cannon. I mean, you're pretty much going to kill any shade next ram that's coming your way. Yeah. Oh, he does run Zombie Chow. Okay. Should he be playing that, though? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what else is he going to do in that situation? Just try and hero power down this uh, Mana Worm over a couple turns? It yeah, also could be not. flame cannon fodder. But it's one of those things where it's like we talked about. <laughs> it's, one of, it's like we talked about. It's the... Um, it's not necessarily about the fl uh, the flame can. It's that how does he answer mirror entity? How does he answer this mana worm? <laughs> yeah. This mana worm's gonna do so much damage. It's already done a lot. He just has a hero power play this turn. That's brutal. That is just absolutely brutal. He's gonna hope that Sludge Belcher can carry him. Coin Drake or Pilot Shredder. Mm. Coin Drake seems pretty powerful considering you have two Drakes. Yeah. Um, he's thinking, what? It's probably going to be a Sludge Belcher or Drew to the Claw next turn. What puts me in the best position to be able to be able to answer that? Um, probably the Ash Drake. Yeah. Although this allows the Minute Worm to get a little bit more usage. Yes. Yeah. Double Unstable Portal. <laughs> Let's stable portal into the Black Knight. Let's do that. Yeah, I mean, even just double end stable portal allows the Mana Worm to trade into the Sludge Belcher, the first iteration of the mm -hmm. the actual Belcher and not the Sludge. Um, yeah. Either that or, like, something easy so that way a trade could be effective, like Dire Wolf Alpha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Still like to see Black Knight, though. Boulder Fist Ogre? I mean... It kind of still has an awkward spot, though. You can Boulder Fist Ogre and just throw away the coin. <laughs> in order to buff up the Mana Worm. And I don't know if it's necessary. But, I mean, how often do you have the opportunity to throw out a Boulder Fist Ogre like this on turn 5? Boulder Fist Ogre is actually really hard to deal with because it's out of BGH range. That's true. Um, the 6 slot is so clogged up, which is one of the reasons why players don't run that as a vanilla card. And it doesn't have anything else besides just a body. Like, it doesn't have immediate board impact. It doesn't have, like, Thor's Hand or Sylvanas, where um, you can play it when you're behind and still have it have a lot of effect. He's going for gold here. He's just attacking the Mana Worm as much as possible. That's going to prompt a swipe. A swipe on a Mana Worm. That's a this. Oh, second force of nature. Okay, he's got that. Yeah. I like this better just because it fits his mana a lot better. The hero power is pretty inconsequential at this stage. You can tell Maz has a lot of stuff to do today on the on the docket for Archon because he's playing he's so playing quick. That. Backspace is probably knocking on the doors like, Amaz, we have so much to do. <laughs> You've got that crazy league coming up. Yeah. Plus we have like you know the next five pinnacles to plan for. And it's like, all right, I'll finish this game. Just five <laughs> more minutes, Backspace. Yeah, just <laughs> trying to pay the bills here. Kieran Tor doesn't really allow him to play anything else, but it does give him room to play Boulder Fist. Mm -hmm. I wonder what he's going to grab off this unstable portal. It's hard to top Boulder Fist. It's just kind of distributed stats perfectly. I guess the only thing better would be like Kale Pizod. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Crocolis. The poor yeah. man's Boulder Fist Ogre. Well, right now it looks like Amaz is playing, or Tua is playing Basic Mage. <laughs> Like the kind of the free deck that you get. Yeah, Dr. Just... Boom on seven. Yeah, that's how fast Amaz is playing. Because that's a uh, uh, happens to spectator mode when you play cards before they get all the way to your hand, when you play them too quickly. 
Uh, this is slightly awkward. Doesn't have a clean way to deal with yeah. this. Yeah. Boulder Fist Ogre getting uh, power creeped by War Golem. Yeah. Even just the boom bots alone could very well kill that Boulder Fist Ogre. It's pretty much like two War Golems. That's a good point. Mm, my boom bot getting the revenge kill. Yeah. So this is a. Uh, um, the little bit of tech that Tuet has put in the Steppo Mage, the Snow Chuggers, the Water Elementals, and the Harrison Jones. Which is really interesting. It's super targeting weapon classes. Mm -hmm. um, Snow Chugger and Water Elemental do really well against Druid as well. Because it sort of uh, negates half of their hero power. Uh, but it, it's just very effective against Hunter, Rogue. Uh, especially Warrior, and Tuet, talking to him, he's, he was really expecting a lot more Warrior than we've actually seen. Hmm. Well, he's not fighting, chasing any Warriors. Maz ends up picking up the trade against the Boulder Fist Ogre, trying to see if he can stabilize. Evaluating the Boombot first, and it hits the face for four. Whoa. I think he would have loved to hit the Drake or something else. So he's going to have to drop Swipe and the Pilot Shredder instead. He's starting to stabilize, and he's also counting about the possibility of maybe killing his opponent, but because he does have that combo. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, do you pass up a flame strike here? I don't know. Maybe you you don't have to though. You can still get away with just pinging with the Drake. Yeah. But. Hmm. Pilot Shredder being up there still is rather problematic. It look yeah it. Oh man, this is. I kind of would have liked to see a flame strike there, to be honest. Uh, it, as much as good as it feels to sort of cycle with the Azure Drake, um, the way he's going to have, going to deal with this Powder Cheddar is really ineffective. Um, I guess it all depends on actually what came out of that. Ooh, the one I cheat. That's not really that effective, right? Nope. Does it just get pinged down? Mm hmm. But I still think Amaz is in a pretty decent spot right now. I mean, he's going to be... He's at that point where... It all depends if his opponent gets fireball, though. If his opponent gets fireball, the game's over. And Amaz realistically might have to just hope that his opponent can't... Oh, yeah, he's at 9 health. Yeah. But then here's another thing, too. Because he's also going to get flame striked here. Yeah. Um, Amaz just needs to just stabilize onto the board. And he might have to use his combo defensively. And that might just end the game. Yeah, actually, next turn, the game is over if he doesn't find a way to deal with this or if he doesn't use combo. Because you have to expect, and this is one of the reasons... Oh! <laughs> it's yeah. the fastest I've ever seen a Moss play. And Ragnaros needs to hit the face. And Tuet needs to draw empty. And Moss has to go combo and win. <laughs> <laughs> Because he'd be on one health, effectively. Yeah. Uh, well, if he doesn't use Frostbolt here, I mean, he could use combo next turn to clear and right. just have Rag. He um, plays Water Elemental, Kirin Tor, and then Ping. Yeah. So he'd still, he'd be at, if, if that was the case, he'd be at four health. Um, oh, no, he wouldn't be able to hero power. So, no, he would die the following turn. Just because if he nine mana, wouldn't be able to weave in the hero power just to All Frostbolt right. Ping the next turn. So... I think he does have to go for the for the one and four to win here. <laughs> it right, feels well, like we've been in this situation a lot of times. Now it's time to tell whether or not Amaz <laughs> actually just doesn't have time to to finish out this this series. Like, is this, if he has a bunch of chores to do, you just go combo. If not, you go Drew the Claw and you play a little defense. Or actually, does Drew the Claw even help? Probably not. I don't it actually think so. realistically, just like he said. Yeah, the one and three, the one and three to win. Oh yeah, it would be one and three. Actually, sure. it's it's no, it's one and two. It's a fifty-fifty because you kill off the mad scientist, right? Oh yeah, it is a, a fifty-fifty. Oh boy! Uh oh! Let's Classic see if... Amaz. Is Amaz back? <laughs> does is he, he still get it? Oh! <laughs> Amaz doesn't even blink an eye. Uh, I blinked twice. <laughs> this We're... is Amaz. And I guess that answers the question. Do we win? We do. Well, classic Amaz, man. It's, uh, you know, we thought 
We thought maybe uh, he was in trouble because it's a really rough matchup, but mm -hmm. tough uh, loss again for Two Wit as that is the second week in a row that he's been eliminated here on day number two. Yeah, um, in both both weeks he's played like four best of fives. So over the course of the two weeks that he's qualified with the Challenger Cups plus the actual weeks he's played like thirty best of fives, and yeah. he's and I mean he's, he's coming getting eliminated just a little bit too a little bit yeah. too far from the finish line. It's going to be rough if he make, goes to the redemption tournament, makes it to the semifinals of the redemption tournament, but uh, he still yeah. goes away with of course two hundred dollars for each week that he participated, and uh, again he will have a chance in that redemption tournament, and right on time the plate comes up. I know we've we've sort of talked about it. A lot today, but uh, it's going to be really, really fun. May 14th through 17th, uh, we're going to put all 28 of the players that participate in the Legendary Series regular weeks, players that didn't win, going to put them into four play four separate seven-player brackets, and uh, the winner of each of those brackets will join us at that Season 2 Land Finals, which should be super fun. Yeah. So, uh, congrats to Amaz. He's played excellently, yeah. and uh, he's continuing on his streak. I mean, people write off Amaz uh, because mm -hmm. they think, you know, one, he might be a player that's uh, people th think it's considered more lucky than good, but I think it's a case where he's shown that he's played very well and he's getting lucky. So that's what he needs to do in order to win and get a spot in the season finals. And of course, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next match as well, seeing if Raynad can do it against Domnus. Indeed, of course, we will be getting to that match between Domnus and Raynad, but uh, we did have a chance to sit down with Raynad and talk to him about uh, Tempestorm, his brand, competitive Hearthstone in general. So uh, why don't we see what he said? 